okay so see last class we have started automotive transmission that is uh, we have started a first unit that is a clutch and uh, gearbox so we have seen uh, what are the components in the drive line what is the function of clutch and we have seen uh, requirements of transmission system and uh, clutch why it is needed and different types of clutch that is a single plate clutch and we have discussed uh, what is the basic principle of clutch by friction it is transmitting the power okay so then uh, we discussed about uh, diaphragm second type of clutch then multi plate clutch centrifugal clutch semi centrifugal so for all this is a type of clutches you have to need the diagram alone if you are able to draw the diagram you will be able to understand the concept also so practice the diagram well and today we will be starting a gearbox so already uh, you might have seen in the last class i have shown you that is a transmission component first one is clutch engine is not a transmission component engine is a propulsive component okay so after engine i am having what clutch so clutch is my first transmission component okay it is going to connect the engine with the rest of transmission system and after clutch i am having what gearbox that is a transmission uh, unit okay so this one red color one is a gearbox so today we are going to discuss about this uh, gearbox what is the need of this uh, gearbox no gearbox will provide various uh, gear ratio that is uh, depending upon my road condition so for certain condition i need more torque for certain condition i need less torque and i have to drive at uh, high speed for example while uh, when you are starting no we need uh, more torque okay so what i will do i will uh, keep it in first gear at the time i will be getting more torque so that i can uh, start my vehicle overcome the initial uh, resistance once i am overcoming i will be needing less torque only so that i will be switching over to higher gears and there is another gear called a uh, direct gear what will happen no that is a uh, before gearbox i will be having a gearbox input shaft okay see here uh, before gearbox uh, gearbox input shaft and uh, output of the gearbox i will be having gearbox output shaft okay this one is gearbox output shaft that is before uh, u joint and before uh, gearbox the, uh, the same shaft will be there and uh, that is not shown in the sketch so that one will be gearbox input shaft and gearbox output shaft what will happen the speed of the gearbox input shaft and output shaft will not be same because uh, depending upon my requirement if i need a uh, torque more the speed of the output shaft will be more uh, less but torque will be more okay so what will happen i will be providing various speed ratio that is i will be providing a variety that is i am providing a flexibility for you to get uh, different uh, torques okay so what happens now uh, that is in direct gear there is a case called a direct gear in the direct gear only my speed of input shaft and speed of output shaft will be same okay you understood if direct gear means power will be coming from the engine and it will be going to through clutch and through the gearbox what will happen direct gear uh, top gear you might have seen uh, when you are driving in a bike you may see top gear what is the criteria for top gear no resistance will be less i will be concentrating on speed so what will happen less torque and maximum speed so what will happen my gearbox input shaft speed and output shaft speed will be equal whereas in first gear torque is more and speed will be less so i am providing what speed reduction actually how i am getting the torque no by speed reduction i am getting a torque you might have seen uh, gears yeah, i will choose uh, the gear size and i will be providing the required uh, torque okay that is the main function of this uh, gearbox first gear i need i will i will be bothering about less speed only i will be bothering about more torque because more resistance is uh, will be available uh, so i have to overcome it okay so first gear more torque less speed and once uh, i am overcoming the resistance i will be uh, switching over to the next gear in that gear 
resistance will be less and uh, once i am matching the resistance the excess torque will be used for acceleration okay acceleration or hill climbing okay or drop or pull drop or pull means i can pull another vehicle okay so like this the, these are the primary function of this uh, gearbox so it is a main unit without this uh, gearbox you will not be able to drive our road wheel if gearbox is not there now what will happen the same speed and same torque will be coming to your rear wheel what will happen i will not be able to take my vehicle along the road okay i need variation i need variation of the torque so depending upon the road condition i have to provide torque okay if i am going to travel over a uh, gradient at that time i can't go in a top gear because i need more torque to overcome the gradient resistance the, so i will be uh, moving to lower gears okay so that is a main function of gearbox now we will see so now i have explained you what is the necessity of gearbox so we need a gearbox so that uh, i'll be able to uh, negotiate a different uh, what to say path that is a varying resistance will be there so we have to we have to travel over the different path okay you can see now functions of gearbox so i already told you know torque ratio that is i can vary the torque ratio between engine and wheels whatever i am discussing it already i have given explanation for you this one again i am summarizing the points so torque ratio can be varied torque ratio is nothing but how much torque available in the gearbox input shot how much torque is available to the wheels that ratio can be termed as torque ratio okay so out when i will vary you no know, when i need for rapid acceleration i will be keeping the excess torque for rapid acceleration and for climbing gradient another important function that is i did in uh, discuss during the intro part see in a vehicle no uh, that is in cars you will be taking reverse that is for certain occasion you have to take the vehicle in reverse that is the main secondary function of gearbox first function to provide a leverage the appropriate term that will be given in the book is leverage that is i am giving a flexibility to give uh, different torques and uh, different speed okay that will be the first function and second one will be the reversal that is when i want to reverse no i will be uh, using the gearbox without gearbox i can't reverse my vehicle so what I'll, what i will be doing no see i will be so, uh, showing the sketch here ah see when i am going forward no these two gears will be engaged no need to see other thing see gears c and d will be in engaged i will be taking the vehicle in uh, forward okay and uh, appropriate uh, gear ratio will come see c and d this gear our uh, size is small and this gear size is big so based on the sizes i will be getting the gear ratio okay now i uh, assume that c gear is rotating clockwise you might have studied in uh, mechanics of machines or theory of machines when two gears are in mesh assume that c and d are in mesh okay in the sketch it is not a mesh assume that c uh, d is moving uh, towards c and it is in mesh c is driving d uh, with the power of c i am driving d why i want to explain no c is rotating clockwise what will happen to d it will be rotating in anti clockwise okay so that is very very important that is uh, when c is rotating clockwise my d will be rotating in anti clockwise assume that i am uh, traveling forward in the vehicle that is a uh, d will uh, give forward motion for my vehicle i want to reverse so what i have to do uh, it has to come in the opposite direction if d is uh, anti clockwise i have to bring it in clockwise okay so what i will be doing i will be placing a idler gear see in this arrangement this is a reverse gear i will be placing a idler gear now see g gear is rotating in anti clockwise and this one will be rotating in clockwise and again d will be coming in mesh with this okay so now what will happen uh, d and g will be rotating in same direction that is i will be able to get what reverse 
okay how reverse is achieved no we are placing a idler gear between the two main gears actually d and g if i am going to mesh it directly i will be traveling forward only if i want to travel in reverse i will be bringing what a idler gear idler gear means it will change the direction of rotation why the word is idler no it is going to transfer uh, it is going to uh, change the rotation direction okay so it will be coming reverse so that is a secondary function of gearbox okay so i have explained you how reverse is going to come next uh, transmission can be disconnect from engine okay that is when uh, you are uh, uh, see this position is neutral uh, when you are uh, driving the car you will be knowing this over uh, driving the car or uh, over uh, driving the motorbike uh, you will be knowing it that is when you are uh, about to change the gears you will be pressing the clutch listen carefully you are going to change the clutch uh, gears you will be pressing the clutch that is you are disengaging the clutch if i am saying uh, pressing the clutch means always clutch will be in engaged position once i am pressing the clutch what will happen it will be disengaged so what will happen from uh, power from the engine uh, will not be transferred to the gearbox my gearbox input shaft uh, alone itself uh, will not be getting a uh, power so that uh, my load on the gearbox will be less next what i will be doing is i will be putting the first if the gear is running in first gear i will be coming to the neutral position then i will be changing into the second gear so my gearbox uh, provide me a option that is uh, from uh, when i want to go to first gear to second gear i will be coming to first gear to neutral position first then i will be going to the second gear i am having option to come into the neutral position the same thing is uh, when you are starting the car okay when you are sitting in the car and uh, starting the key ignition uh, circuit is uh, closed current uh, is coming to the current is coming from the battery so flywheel a starter motor will be driving the flywheel Cr manual cranking of the engine will start then engine uh, will be started automatically what will happen at that time i will be keeping the gearbox in neutral position because i will not uh, connect my engine to the gearbox okay gears will be in neutral and i will be uh, 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 disengaging the clutch so that uh, the gearbox will not be connected to the engine my load on the engine will be less for example now the i am keeping in uh, engaged position what will happen engine clutch also engaged okay engine clutch gearbox everything will be engaged once i am going to start the starter motor now what will happen it will be driving the engine it will be driving the gears in the gearbox so what will happen my starter motor will, life will be gone uh, it can battery it will be consuming it can't be consuming that much amount of power from the battery also so when i have to start my car i have to bring the gears in neutral position and i will be uh, pressing the clutch so that it is disengaged so only a load on the engine will be there i will be starting the engine then gradually i will be uh, releasing the clutch that is uh, gradually i will be engaging the clutch once the clutch is engaged gearbox input shaft will be rotating then after that to make the gearbox output shaft to rotate i will engage the gears okay see here this is a gearbox uh, lever okay this one gear selector for see now uh, from engine power is coming green color uh, gear is whenever engine is rotating green color uh, gear will be rotating in the uh, gearbox no there is another uh, component called lay shaft lay shaft or counter shaft here what will happen see all the gears are integral integral means it is rigidly fixed to the shaft when the lay shaft is rotating all the three gears will be rotating for example the lay shaft is uh, rotating at 100 rpm speed of first gear this one also 100 rpm this one also 100 rpm this one also 100 rpm because my gears are integral it will take the speed of the lay shaft itself okay so now see i am not uh, i am having a collar like this 
through the collar only i am going to tra transfer the power to my gearbox output shaft this orange color is gearbox output shaft okay so what happen when i am not uh, attaching the collar either to left or right it is in neutral position this my shaft will not be uh, rotating okay so what happen i am transferring this collar towards left okay so this one is the movement i am transferring the collar towards uh, left so now what will happen uh, this gear and my collar will be engaged i will be getting a power from this uh, gear and i will be transmitting the power to the shaft okay so that uh, gear is known as first uh, gear okay uh, maybe first gear or uh, second gear depending upon gear ratio which uh, gear ratio is more that will be the first gear when you are doing the calculation will be uh, knowing it okay so what will happen now see when i am moving this to left power flow is from engine green color uh, gear then it is coming a uh, meshing gear uh, this gear is rotating and uh, all the gears will be uh, rotating at the same speed and from this gear power will be going to the blue gear and from the blue gear it is going to the collar and collar to the shaft so are able to understand now i am shifting this collar to this uh, gear that is i will be coming to neutral position and i will be uh, disengaging the clutch then only it will be easier for me to shift over to higher gears so i will be moving this collar to this side right hand side so what will happen now uh, i will be taking the power from this uh, larger gear and power will be coming to the collar and collar to the shaft okay now the power flow will be engine to this red gear and now from this red gear the power will not uh, go that is power will be going but i will not uh, utilize that power i see the last one from this only i am getting the power from this the blue gear will be uh, getting the power and from that collar is getting the power from the collar i, I will be get, uh, transferring the power to the shaft so what happens now i am getting uh, another gear ratio how i am getting the different gear ratio you know see the size see this uh, size say 30m this side is 40m what about the, this size this size may be 20 and this side may be 50 see the difference in gear ray, uh, size will give different gear ratio you might have studied the law of gearing that is n1 by n2 is equal to g2 by uh, g1 okay my uh, 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 that is uh, sorry d1 by d2 okay uh, d1 will be uh, corresponding to the diameter of the gears okay so based on the diameters only i'm changing my gear ratios uh, understood the concept well any doubt if you are having any doubt you can ask me you can unmute and uh, you can ask me i will be giving some time to you uh, yes sir no? okay yes sir uh, yes sir yes sir okay. so now slide is visible now because without uh, seeing the slide you can't understand visible visible good okay now i will summarize see first i will give explanation then second revision that is a second discussion will be on ppt so that uh, two times i am explaining that concept and it will be uh, recorded in your uh, mind okay so you can understand the concept well so from my explanation you can understand what are the functions of gearbox so with gearbox what i am doing i am providing variation in speed and torque okay so this no need to remember uh, understanding itself you can uh, elaborate the function variation in speed and torque then i am providing neutral already i have explained you know that is i am providing a neutral condition to the vehicle that is i am having option that is a gearbox input shaft will be rotating gearbox output shaft will not be rotating that is a neutral position okay when the clutch also disengaged 
both the gearbox input shaft and gearbox output shaft will not be rotating these are the entry question okay when i have studied uh, automobile engineering when i appeared for uh, interview these questions have been asked they will be asking you clutch is engaged okay gears are in neutral so what about uh, gearbox input shaft whether it will be rotating or not it will be rotating okay but gearbox output shaft will not be rotating because gears are in neutral next question clutch is disengaged gears are engaged okay assume this condition what about gearbox output shaft then also gearbox output shaft will not be rotating because gearbox input shaft also is not rotating clutch is disengaged when the gearbox input shaft is not rotating how you can expect gearbox output shaft to rotate okay so it will not be rotating so like this i uh, will be getting a uh, different uh, questions in the interview related to gearbox okay so when you are appearing for any interview they will be asking this question what is the function of uh, universal joint what is the function of slip joint what do you mean by arc key drive torque rev drive standard entry question for an automobile engineer okay now we will see classification of gearbox okay classification of a gearbox you are having what manual operated semi automatic full automatic transmission i will be explaining this manual operated means it is conventional vehicle there will be uh, three pedals that is a clutch a uh, brake Uh, accelerator that is we will say a b c starting from right accelerator brake and clutch okay and uh, uh, there will be uh, that is a uh, you you may use right leg for accelerator and left leg for clutch uh, okay so that uh, you can uh, uh, what to say same uh, right leg for accelerator and brake okay so that uh, you will not uh, uh, what to say press both the brake and uh, accelerator okay <coughs> so manual operated i will be having clutch clutch pedal brake pedal and accelerator pedal okay semi automatic means clutch i will be going to centrifugal automatic clutch but uh, gearbox will be manual that is a no need to disengage or uh, engage clutch driver no need to do it will be by uh, fluid coupling or uh, it will be from uh, centrifugal clutch assume that so depending upon the speed clutch will be engaged and depending upon the speed clutch will be disengaged okay so there will be no clutch pedal there will be only two pedals accelerator pedal and brake pedal okay a and b now come to fully automatic will be having a uh, uh, no shifting of uh, gears is uh, required that is you have to keep it the mode park mode neutral mode reverse mode drive mode uh, gears will be changed automatically so two pedals will be there for semi automatic uh, fully automatic brake as well as uh, accelerator pedal for semi automatic gear selection is manual you have to select the gears or as fully automatic gear selection is automatic you no need to select the gears but you have to select the mode just you have to keep the mode and after that uh, you no need to select the gears so you can see nowadays uh, most of the cars to make the drivers comfort no uh, you will be having what automatic transmission uh, physically uh, handicapped uh, they can uh, drive this automatic uh, transmission cars okay and uh, ladies so no need to select the gears just they will keep in mode that is a uh, drive mode means gear 1 gear 2 gear 3 automatically it will be going and uh, if i am go going to switch over the gear lever to reverse automatically it will be coming to the reverse okay so in manually what i have to do once the i am overcoming the resistance i have to press the clutch then i have to Uh, bring the gear lever into neutral then i have to go to the first gear okay so my work is uh, getting increased whereas in fully automatic uh, directly uh, the gears will be engaged my work will be reduced okay so but uh, cost is getting increased cost and fuel consumption will be more when i am going for fully automatic transmission to compare the car that is a 
you see marthi alto manual transmission means the cost will be around uh, less than 5 lakhs fully automatic means the cost will be increased by 2 or uh, 3 lakhs more it may be up to 10 lakhs also depending upon my configuration so fully automatic transmission is the recent trend in gearbox okay so this one is uh, needed in conventional vehicle only that is engine operated vehicle whereas if i'm going for electric vehicle this uh, unit uh, can be uh, uh, eliminated also that is i will be uh, if uh, gearbox some vehicles it may be uh, having based on my motor configuration itself i can vary the torque okay so that is the main advantage of electric vehicle all the components will be uh, eliminated okay so that development also we are focusing okay so fully automatic transmission semi automatic manually operated okay so three types of uh, classification are there and conventional gearbox based on selecting the gears i will be having what progressive selective pre selective okay progressive selective pre selective okay and selective in this area only you will be getting a part b question what do you mean by sliding mesh what do you mean by constant mesh what do you mean by synchro mesh okay so gearbox two three types major classification progressive selective pre selective pre selective means uh, uh, already uh, it has been determined okay epicyclic gearbox selective you will be selecting the gears Uh, gear uh, variation will be in finite step okay so let us discuss this and part b question only will be getting in this uh, area and progressive and pre selective we may get uh, six marks or four marks or two marks what do you mean by progressive gearbox like that they may ask okay so already i have told you progressive type gearbox okay see here progressive type gearbox where they will be using you know they will be using in motor uh, cycle always when uh, the gears will be passing through the intermediate uh, speed that is from first gear it will be coming to neutral then it will be going to second gear so in between uh, two gears i will be giving uh, i will be coming to neutral position that is uh, intervening speed will be there or intervening or intermediate uh, speed will be there when i am going to one speed to another and uh, this uh, rectangle this one you have to draw it may be asked in part b or uh, part 2 that is a uh, in depth explanation means you have to draw this okay that is you are showing that between two position neutral position is there and this one is for four speed gearbox what is the peculiar characteristics of this gearbox no it is a combination of both sliding mesh and constant mesh this you will be understanding when i am going to explain this sliding and constant mesh okay so this one is progressive type gearbox next is epicyclic or uh, planetary type gearbox see in epicyclic and all there will be no this dark clutch okay dark clutch means see this is a dark clutch that is a collar will be there a mechanism to make the gears engage to transfer the power to the shaft okay so that arrangement will not be there in epicyclic or planetary type gearbox no sliding ducts so this one is what no sliding ducts will uh, sliding means it will be moving along this shaft uh, it will be having a internal spline and shaft will be having external spline so that it can slide okay whereas in epicyclic we will not have this okay so we will be having a brake band okay uh, you can now i will be explaining this epicyclic or planetary here why it is known as planetary you know it is like our uh, planet sun and planet gears are rotating that is it will be uh, it is like earth it will be rotating about its own axis and also it will be rot revolving around the sun so that only the name uh, planetary uh, gear okay so what are the components in the planetary gearbox no i will be having a ring gear and i will be having a planet gears these are known as planet gears okay and uh, center will be having a sun gear and see this one is a carrier carrier or arm that is a this will be holding the planet gear the, the carrier only will make the planet gear to revolve around the sun gears okay 
so planet gear will be rotating around its axis and it will be revolving around the sun gear also okay so planet gear will be rotating about its axis and it will be revolving also so again i will be explaining this one is sun gear and between the sun gear and ring gear we are having what planet gear so planet gear is bridging the gap the most appropriate word is bridging the gap between the sun gear and uh, ring gear okay and uh, carrier will be holding the planet gears uh, together okay so that it will be revolve around the sun gear how the different gear ratio you know uh, over the ring gear i will be having a band band is like a arrangement when i am pressing no the gear will not be allowed to rotate what will happen over the ring gear i will be having a band when i am fixing the band ring gear will not be rotating i will be giving a input to the sun gear i will be taking a output from the arm that is a carrier at that time i will be getting one gear ratio and second i will be fixing the sun gear uh, the same brake band some arrangement will be there when you are studying this you will be able to uh visualize uh, well that is in unit 3 automatic transmission is there there uh, ip cycle uh, gear box will be able to see okay so now i am fixing the sun gear i will be taking the output from the ring gear then another uh, gear ratio will be obtained okay so by different combination fixing the ring gear taking the output from sun gear so different combination i will be getting a different gear ratio that is epicyclic or planetary gearbox epicyclic or planetary type gearbox so i am summarizing the point no sliding ducts or gears and i will be having a brake band okay brake band means uh, then uh, uh, mechanical arrangement is uh, different okay by tightening the brake band i will be getting a different gear ratio this one you have to remember what are the component in the planetary gear set a two mark question can be asked uh, what planetary gear set comprises of what okay so you have to remember a ring gear or annular wheel sun gear and planet gears with carrier okay so this one is second type after progressive type this one is a epicyclic gear train what will happen here you remember the word pre selective i will not be selecting the gear already uh, based on the design my gear ratio or pre selective okay this is the arrangement in uh, gear box epicyclic or planetary gear box see different sets are there okay i am having different sets of uh, epicyclic gear box each set will be giving uh, some ratios gear ratios okay uh, normally this will be used in automatic transmissions only okay next what uh, is very very important for examination point of view selective type gear box selective type means from neutral position i will be getting any uh, speed okay on the same thing when i want to shift from uh, forward uh, gear that is gear 1 to gear 2 i have to go to neutral position one that is, otherwise what will happen my gears will be getting uh, damaged the teeth on the gears will be getting or damaged i have to change my gears wear and tear will be more so what i have to do when i am shifting from first gear to second gear i have to come to neutral position then i have to shift to the second gear similarly whenever I, whenever i going to go to second gear to third gear second gear to third gear directly if i am going no that's all my gear teeth will be uh, gone that is when you are uh, driving the vehicle you will be knowing this that is uh, when you are going for a driving class the instructor will be giving instruction that is uh, when you are uh, shifting the gears always you have to come to the neutral position then you are uh, you have to sh shift to the another gears why you know the speed will be equalized i am reducing the speed so that i am uh, reducing the force so gear teeth will not be uh, damaged okay so i have to come to the neutral position and i have to shift to the higher gears so what are the three arrangements of uh, selective type gear box no constant mesh gear box then uh, in constant mesh i am having uh, two types positive torque clutch 
in advancement of this only i am having another arrangement called synchromance synchromance means equalizer okay that is i will be equalizing the speed of the two gears before engagement so that uh, gradual engagement will be there and first type that is a normal conventional vehicle that is initial uh, uh, discovery is sliding mesh gearbox very easy construction is easy and understanding also will be very easy but disadvantage is uh, more noise more vibration okay so this is the first invention in gearbox sliding mesh then after that uh, constant mesh gearbox with the uh, positive duct dark clutch came then we got uh, synchro mesh gearbox okay then we are uh, going to a pcycle gearbox automatic transmission like that uh, development of gearbox taken place okay so already i have explained you i will be uh, discussing some important points that is what you have to remember is any speed you remember this word when i am going for a selective type gearbox from neutral position any speed okay that is i can uh, go to first gear second gear third gear or anything i can uh, go okay and uh, what is uh, advantage no the construction will be uh, simple compared to other thing compared to epicyclic gearbox to see this construction will be uh, simple a disadvantage already i told you know uh, compared to epicyclic this gearbox will be noisy because i am moving no moving the lever to engage the gears so vibration and noise is the major problem and uh, gear ratio will not be continuous okay that is uh, it will be in step 3 to 5 step okay that is a uh, you may see first gear uh, i'll be uh, putting the vehicle and i'll be driving then after that i have to change the gear in uh, in terms of steps okay it is not a continuous i have to change okay the first one is sliding mesh gearbox okay we will be uh, discussing this see this sketch is taken from kirpal singh in kirpal singh is a standard uh, automobile engineering book so that uh, every b automobile engineering student will be uh, referring it for a sketch that is a simple line diagram will be uh, given whereas uh, me students will be referring a uh, advanced book uh, eisler you can also refer eisler eisler uh, somewhat uh, they might have uh, discussing the topic in advanced okay for initial point of view when initially going to the concept for ba sliding mesh uh, we can refer kirpal singh in after upgradation of knowledge uh, you can go for uh, eisler okay so we will be discussing sliding mesh gearbox uh, wait for 2 minutes okay i will have some water and i will come
Okay. Shall we start now? Uh, this break is uh, so that it not be monotonous. Okay. So two minutes of break, you can uh, refresh your mind. Okay. So who is on the line? Raghavan, Anigan, then Kannan. Shall we start? Are you ready? We can proceed with this topic. Anigan, then Raghavan. Sliding mesh. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Sir, your uh, voice is uh, too low, sir. It. Now it is okay. Now it is okay. Uh, better, sir. Better, uh, wait, wait. Let me check yes, sir. the optimum position. So that only I am increasing the voice. That is, I will be seeing here when uh, your uh, more uh, what is a variation in the pattern means. I can understand why it is increasing. Okay, see, based on this only I am uh, judging. Okay, now it is okay. It will be the optimum position. I placed a very close to my mouth. What about Raghavan? Raghavan, no replay. Simply connecting and uh, listening somewhere. Huh? Raghavan, can you please unmute or come to chat box, man? I want to see whether you are listening or not. No response. What about Manigandan? You have left the call. Manigandan. Sir. Why you left the call, man? Sir, network problem, sir. Okay. What about voice? Okay. Airtel, no? sir. Ah, okay, okay sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Airtel network, sir. Airtel, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, now we will start sliding mess gearbox, okay? See, sliding mix gearbox, you no need to go through this point. Why I have put this point? No, for examination point of view, I will be sharing this PDF so that you can go through. Okay, so if my, I may forget one point. So in order to recap any one point, if I am going to miss, I can check in this uh, wording so that only I have presented. It will be useful for both you and me, but actually in PPT, the words should be uh, less. Okay, see now. In sliding mesh gearbox, you will be having this arrangement. Sir, one doubt, sir. Okay, tell me. What is the doubt? Exam all the answer is no point point is no mark or mala paraval no mark or mas. Point point you can write, but don't put numbers. Okay. Okay, sir. Don't put numbers. See, let me show you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That is numbers you should not put. Instead of that. You can write like this, dot. So this one now, uh, space will be uh, more and your important points, uh, visibility will be more. So examiner will be very comfortable in correcting your paper and uh, you'll be getting more marks, okay? Okay, sir, okay, sir. So sliding mesh gearbox okay let me explain carefully listen you have to draw this sketch only in answer paper for understanding purpose only you have to refer other sketch but in a uh, answer paper for examination point of view my recommendation if you are comfortable you can draw otherwise you can refer sketch from others books also we used to draw when we have studied this okay so because it is uh, the sketch is taken from uh, kirpal singh okay see here Okay, sir. This one is called clutch shaft. What do you mean by clutch shaft? No. After clutch, I am having one shaft. That is a clutch output shaft. And gearbox input shaft. Both are same. Understand carefully. After uh, clutch, I am having one shaft. 
that is clutch shaft gearbox before gearbox i am having one shaft okay so both are same so clutch shaft and this one a yeah, no that is clutch gear no need to go through this uh, see the sketch and my arrow a is clutch gear and b is gear on lay shaft okay already i told you the gear b uh, e e c whatever uh, alphabets may be it is not uh, visible much so that only i am reading it slow b e c g okay you can uh, change the alphabets also doesn't matter what he has done is a b c d first and reverse gear see a b c d first and reverse gear second gear e f reverse gear g so like that uh, he has given okay so now see b e c g all the gears are integral with the lay shaft for the gear box you have to understand the important concept lay shaft that is counter uh, shaft it is known as lay shaft or counter shaft this is uh, very very important they may ask you what is lay shaft or counter shaft so it is a shaft in the gear box where all the gears are integral integral means the speed of the gears will be same for main shaft i will be taking the power from the gears in the lay shaft only okay so that is very important okay now see uh, i am i will be asking one question speed of b is 100 rpm what about speed of e 100 c 100 g also so i can say my nb is equal to ng that is equal to nc and that is equal to ng speed of all this gears will be same okay so now see uh, you were having a uh, two gears on my main shaft that is what is the main thing is the gears are splined splined means i can move this gears there will be another mechanism a sliding dock will be there that i will be showing next slide for examination of point of view this sketch will be sufficient that is i will be able to move this gear d either left or right there will be another arrangement which is going to move this gear no that will be called as sliding dock okay whereas this one f second and i speed gear okay so i will be able to move the gears on the main shaft alone i can't move the gears on lay shaft okay that you have to understood okay now see what will happen for first gear assume first gear first gear means more torque less speed i will be moving the gear d towards c gear d and c will be in mesh i will be showing the sketch see here first gear gear d and this gear will be mesh this is for uh, different speed this sketch is somewhat uh, next speed okay but uh, for examination point of view you refer uh, this sketch you can uh, draw a next sketch also for first gear c c and d will be in mesh okay so now what will be the power flow power flow direction you can draw an arrow with help of pencil that is a first you have to draw this sketch that is in neutral position that is f and e is not in mesh d and c is not in mesh neutral position you can write and one sketch and second sketch first gear so what you have to do you have to move this gear d towards c okay you have to move this uh, gear d towards c so that my c and d will be in mesh okay how the power is going to flow see from engine power will be coming when i am uh, engaging the clutch clutch is always in engaged i am not pressing the pedal uh, i am not uh, disengaging the clutch so what will happen my clutch shaft will be rotating okay so what will happen my clutch gear a will be rotating and b also will be rotating okay because always my a and b are in mesh that is a word you have to remember 
A and B are always in mesh. Okay. So whenever my clutch shaft is rotating, another entry question. Whenever my clutch shaft is rotating, what will happen? My counter shaft also will be rotating. Okay. So when the gears on the main shaft, this is called main shaft. This is called lay shaft or counter shaft, and this one is clutch shaft. When gears on main shaft is meshing with uh, gears on uh, lay shaft, power will be transferred to main shaft. That is gearbox output shaft. Clutch shaft is gearbox input shaft, and this one is gearbox output shaft. Okay. So what will happen in first gear? Gear D and C are will be in mesh. So power will flow flow from C to D. Starting point is from A. A to B, B to counter shaft, from counter shaft to C, and C to D, and D to main shaft. So what will happen? I will be getting first gear. Okay. Now see second gear. Second gear. What I will be doing? I will not uh, disturb this. I will be uh, making this uh, F to engage with E. This gearbox is providing three gear ratio. G1, G2, G3, and one reverse. Okay. G1 is D and C is engaged. Okay. Now second gear. What I am going to do is F is getting engaged with E. F is getting engaged with E. See what happens. No. Whenever the size on the main shaft gear is getting decreased, speed will get increased. Okay. When size on the gears is more. Torque will be more, speed will be less. More uh, torque, there is more speed reduction, and torque will be more. See, for first gear, the size of the gear is more, whereas for uh, second gear, the size of the gear is less. Okay, so I need, I will be getting more speed compared to the first gear. Torque will be less. So what will happen? My F and E will be in engaged, will be in mesh. Okay. My F and E will be mesh. So what will happen? Power will flow from A to B, and B to E, and E to F. Power will flow from A to B, and B to E, and E to F. F to main shaft. That is a second gear. Now there is another option called high speed gear. High speed means speed of my gearbox input shaft. And gearbox output shaft will be same. Gearbox input shaft and gearbox output shaft will be same. That is directly connected. That is known as direct gear. So in this, what I will be doing now, I will be uh, moving this arrangement instead of left for second uh, gear. I will be moving this F to left. Whereas for uh, I gear, I will be mo moving this uh, gear F towards right. So what will happen? This gear uh, A and F are directly joined, just uh, similar to our clutch. So power will be coming from A to F itself. Okay, I will be getting what? I will not be taking the power from lay shaft directly. I am taking the power from uh, clutch shaft due to some uh, friction. Uh, the power is getting transferred. Okay, there may be some losses. So that is direct uh, gear, the third gear. So first gear, gear C and D is engaged. Second gear, gear F and E is engaged. And third gear, gear F is uh, connecting directly with A. So you can see there will be a step. Okay, so this one will be getting uh, engaged with the gear clutch gear. Now we will go for reverse gear. Reverse gear. What I will be doing now? For first gear, I am moving the D towards left. For reverse gear, I will be moving the D towards right. So what will happen? Assume G is rotating clockwise. Okay. What will happen? No, gear A will be rotating anti-clockwise. Assume anti-clockwise. What about the uh, to gear B? This will be rotating clockwise. Okay. Now, uh, gear B is rotating clockwise means gear G also. Will be rotating in clockwise because my gears are integral. Okay, so now I am placing a intermediate uh, gear. So now this intermediate gear will be rotating in anti-clockwise. See, this one is clockwise. Uh, whereas meshing, you might have studied in law of gearing, gears in mesh will be rotating in opposite direction. 
okay so this one uh, gears is rotating in a clockwise and here gears will be rotating in anti clockwise okay so now see when gear d is going to come in mesh with this by idler gear i am changing the rotation of gear, uh, gear. that is when d and g are uh, in me direct mesh what will happen when g is rotating in anti clockwise t will be rotating in clockwise when i am placing a idler gear okay when i am placing a idler gear what will happen i will be ensuring that the direction of gear d and g will be same see g is rotating in clockwise means the idler gear will be rotating in anti clockwise again d will be in meshing with idler idler gear not with uh, g so what will happen again d will be rotating in clockwise direction that is i am reversing the direction for reversing the direction only i am placing the idler gear so in reverse case let me explain it again d will be coming in meshing with idler gear so whatever uh, previously in first gear d will be rotating in one direction say clockwise okay c is rotating in anti clockwise d is in mesh with c so d is uh, rotating in clockwise now i want to reverse d has to rotate in anti clockwise so i am placing a idler gear so d is coming meshing with idler gear see now g is uh, rotating in uh, clockwise whereas uh, sorry g is rotating in anti clockwise let us assume anti clockwise for reverse okay g is rotating in anti clockwise and i am having idler gear that will be rotating in clockwise now this one will be meshing with d so d will be rotating in anti clockwise so that i am getting reverse direction first gear c is rotating in anti clockwise d will be in meshing i will be getting clockwise gear will be going in forward direction for reverse direction i have to reverse the direction of the gear rotation i am reversing it by placing a idler gear that's all this much explanation you have to give no need to write uh, that is you have no need to mug up and all if you are understanding the concept you will be able to explain well okay and another characteristics of this uh, gearbox see all the gears i am using no spur gear what do you mean by spur gear no teeth will be parallel to the axis okay spur gear teeth will be parallel to the axis you might have studied in, uh, in uh, mechanics of machines okay teeth will be parallel to the axis okay so what will happen when i am going to mesh this gear it will be noisy and the vibration also will be there okay because i am using what spur gear uh, gradual engagement will not be there suddenly i will be engaging and you will might have seen in buses okay that is i will be having a sliding mesh gear box driver changing the gear means you will be feeling that uh, vibration shocks also it will be a uh, feeling okay so that is the explanation i am giving so that uh, the main point you have to highlight is in sliding mesh gear box we are having what spur gear okay so see now for first gear gear ratio is 3 is to 1 what do you mean by 3 is to 1 no for every three times uh, rotation of clutch shaft my main shaft will be rotating once for example clutch shaft is rotating at 300 rpm means my main shaft will be rotating at 100 rpm for every three rotation of clutch shaft clutch shaft will be rotating fast my main shaft will be rotating slow S second gear means i am increasing the speed of the main shaft see two for every two rotation of the clutch shaft my main shaft will be rotating once previously 3 is to 1 now 2 is to 1 the difference of the speed between main shaft and clutch shaft is getting reduced okay now we are having top gear top gear what will happen both the gears will be rotating at the same speed one is to one clutch shaft speed will be equal to main shaft speed this one is 300 this one also will be 300 and actually for reverse gear no the speed reduction will be uh, more or less uh, same to first gear because in reverse you will not be going at high speed because in reverse you have to see the parking so that uh, i will be going in slowly only okay so for reverse gear the gear ratio will be more or less uh, same as first uh, gear reverse gear means what will happen main shaft will be 
turning in direction opposite to that of clutch shaft okay so that is a uh, gear g is uh, rotating clutch shaft this one sorry i am showing a lay shaft it will be same as that of lay shaft this one also can be asked in the interview reverse gear what will be the direction of main shaft compare with the lay shaft you have to say main shaft uh, direction and lay shaft direction will be same but main shaft direction and the clutch shaft direction is opposite there this type of question is to uh, making you to think whether you have understood the concept or not by mugging up no simply drawing the sketch and simply writing you will be getting pass mark but uh, whether you have understood or not this type of questions will be uh, useful okay so i will i may be asking you main shaft and the clutch shaft will be rotating in uh, opposite direction in which gear you have to say it is in reverse gear okay and what about neutral no gears will be engaged gears in main shaft is uh, not uh, in mesh with gears in lay shaft okay so this one is sliding mesh gear box and this one is i am taken from uh, net another source okay here uh, see here here i am having a uh, three direct speed one reverse gear when i am asking uh, what type uh, type of gear box this one is sliding mesh gear box and how many direct speed i am obtaining three speed first gear second gear third gear three direct speed and one reverse speed gear uh, for here you can see i will be obtaining four direct speed first gear second gear third gear and the fourth one will be the top gear and fifth one is reverse gear so four direct speed and one reverse speed so now see first gear low speed i torque see here just see the arrow clutch shaft gear uh, this gear transmitting the power arrow is going from which gear the power is taking here okay so whichever gear on the main shaft size is more that will be the first gear okay now see for second gear what will happen uh, it is a second gear it is third this is a second gear this this gear is uh, used for first gear now what this gear size is less okay so this gear will be meshing with another gear on the lay shaft so what will happen how to find the gear ratio you will be having a problem okay based on the number of teeth on the gears will be uh, finding the gear ratio see power flow it is going like this okay and third uh, gear see third increasing the gear gears on the lay shaft size will increase where gears on the main shaft size will decrease okay see main shaft so see and uh, see top gear this gear and this gear directly connected see the power flow and reverse gear see the idler gear is there i'll be using the first gear the bigger gear itself for my reverse gear so that only i told no first gear and reverse gear most more or less the ratio will be uh, within the same value deviation will not be more see i'm having idler gear to reverse the direction okay this one is sliding mesh gear box this stretch and all for understanding point of view only no need to draw for examination you draw this sketch and you can make this c to d similar to this that is you draw c and d together first gear so that your answer will be looking uh, good automotive transmission words less sketch more then only you'll be getting a marks okay and this one is the typical arrangement photographic view there is another name they are giving a crash type of a gear box okay this one is a sliding dog clutch it will be moving the gears okay see this one is the first gear this gear and this gear will be in mesh this arrangement will be moving the gear see the power flow red line this is for understanding point of view first gear power coming like this Okay. Second gear. Third gear. Top gear. See, power is not coming to the counter shot. Even though it is rotating, I am not taking the power. So red line will be direct. Reverse gear. See. 
here here okay, neutral see no red line no power flow my output shaft is not rotating so no red line okay see no gears are joined no need to draw this sketch and all just for understanding purpose okay and this is a gear lever position you might be seeing in the gear box top in the lever side when you are moving uh, like this you are taking this gear to mesh with first gear okay second third fourth so this one is a sliding mesh gear box okay let me show the animation so that you can understand well 5 minutes then after that i will be completing constant mesh gear box also you see the animation i muted the audio because it is coming in hindi see already i told you no clutch shaft clutch gear lay shaft see all the four gears are in same color it shows that it is integral clutch gear always will be engaged with the first gear of the lay shaft rigid fixed gear and this one is what main shaft splines why we need spline now then only we can move the gears on the main shaft that is for uh, sliding mesh gear box you can see three gears this gear is uh, for first gear gears on the main shaft see here idler gear no idler gear for reversing the direction of flow see he is giving animation see i am not uh, engaging the gears this is this gear is in neutral position you can say clutch is engaged but the gear box is neutral okay see gear uh, green color is rotating all the gears are rotating my uh, gears on the main shaft is not rotating road wheel will not be rotating now see he is bringing the moving moving with help of sliding dock is moving the first gear so that the power will flow from lay shaft gear this one this is for reverse so now see the power flow it is taking it will be rotating see shown the arrow no whenever this gear is are getting engaged this one will be rotating okay so first gear over now this is for reverse is showing a first gear and reverse i little gear is there no okay this is for second gear see it is getting engaged now the main shaft will be rotating see this one is the top gear see directly joint power is not taken from lay shaft that's all okay so this is the animation of sliding mesh gear box 
now we will see constant mesh gearbox okay we will finish constant mesh gearbox today and the synchro mesh gearbox will be seeing in next class okay are you ready we can see the next gearbox sliding mesh gearbox itself one question will come in part b now we will see constant mesh gearbox shall we start what happened no response oh manigandan left only raghuman is there what happened to manigandan we will ask net problem with manigandan where are you thing you don't have net connection ah uh, reguman you are listening or not man you either come to chat box at least to put some message yes sir listening nothing is there simply you are connected no response Whether you are listening or not, man. Mani Gandan used to repay something. Yeah, let us wait for Mani Gandan. Mani Gandan net connection is not there. Okay. Otherwise, I will finish this connection mesh. Only one student is there. Uh, that too also raguma i need your mobile number raguman raguman no response simply connected hmm okay so constant mesh gearbox will be uh, seeing now okay anyway it will be recorded manigandan uh, can see the recordings constant mesh gearbox see i can't uh, move the gears on my uh, main shaft that is a uh, splines will be there but uh, gears on the main shaft will not have spline only i will be able to move this uh, sliding dock clutch and constant mesh means always uh, all gears are in be mesh constant mesh you can see these two gears will be in mesh with uh, gear on lay shaft this one and this one but power will not be transmitted to the spline main shaft when this dog clutch is going to move and it will be connected to this gear power will be transmitted to the splined main shaft otherwise power will not be uh, going okay so working is very very simple the same thing only here what will happen i will not move the gear i will be moving this sliding dog clutch so you can see clutch shaft clutch gear and in lay shaft i will be having what gears which are integral and only difference is in constant mesh all the gears are will be in mesh okay in sliding mesh it not be mesh we have to mesh but here all the gears are in mesh but this gears are free to rotate on the main shaft okay the power will not be transferred from this gear to main shaft power will be transferred from this gear to sliding duct and it will be transferred to the main shaft okay so now see first of all you consider this uh, dark clutch first dark clutch what i'll be doing now i'll be moving towards left what will happen from clutch gear power will come to the lay shaft from all the gears will be rotating from this gear on the lay shaft power will be going to the low gear and from the low gear instead of main shaft 
the power will be going to the clutch and from the clutch clutch will be having internal spline that will be meshing with the external spline on the main shaft so from this the clutch internal spline power will be transferred to the spline main shaft okay and power uh, main shaft will be rotating now forget about this clutch uh, rightward leftward movement for first gear and rightward movement for reverse that we will be discussing it later for reverse now come to the sliding dog clutch in this side okay now i am going to talk about second gear now what will be doing i will be meshing this for first gear then i will be bringing back here simultaneously i can engage first gear and second gear i have to go, come to neutral gear that is uh, my selective gear box okay sliding dog clutch see here what i will be uh, doing is i will be uh, moving this sliding dog clutch towards right i will be moving this sliding dog clutch towards right so what will happen power will be coming from clutch gear to lay shaft and power will be going from this lay shaft gear to here and it will be transmitted to sliding dog clutch first gear i am using this sliding dog clutch for second gear i am using this sliding dog clutch and power will be transferred to the main shaft okay for third gear that is our direct gear why i am asking you to refer the sketch in uh, gear box no three direct sphere and one reverse so your arrangement will be easier whereas in other four direct sphere uh, four direct speed and one reverse will be there okay so see now here what i am going to do is i will be moving this uh, dog clutch towards right uh, sorry towards left right is for second gear towards left for direct gear now see power will not be taken from uh, lay shaft power will be taken from clutch gear directly and then from this dog clutch power will be going to spline main shaft okay so that is my top gear okay for a reverse gear you can see sliding dog clutch will be moving towards right now power will be going from clutch gear to the lay shaft and from this gear that is a smallest gear on the lay shaft it will be going to idler gear and from that idler gear it will be going to the reverse you can see now by this arrangement i am reversing the direction of main shaft and clutch shaft okay so this is the photographic uh, representation of constant mesh gear box see all the gears are in mesh here i am having what 1 2 3 4 you can see it is a five direct speed one reverse speed okay so when i am moving the dark clutch here first gear and this one will be the second gear third gear fourth gear okay and here i am having a reverse okay so this is the arrangement for constant mesh and no need to refer uh, this sketch for examination examination you refer the this sketch previous sketch this will be okay this is for five speed or a uh, direct gear uh, arrangement is not there just i can increase the speed that's all okay so now the main difference is in constant mesh i am having helical gear whereas see in sliding mesh i will be having spur gear see spur gear will be there whereas in constant mesh i will be having what helical gear you can see helical helical means teeth will not be parallel to the axis teeth will be inclined it will be making an angle so whenever it is going to get engaged no gradual engagement will be there you might have studied in mechanics of machine uh, contact will be joining at one point gradually uh, contact will be established so noise will be less vibration will be less compared to sliding mesh gearbox so constant mesh gearbox i am replacing spur gear with helical gear and gears will be in constant mesh i am not moving the gears i will be moving the dog clutch that is the difference that's all in three points we can identify the difference between sliding mesh and constant mesh okay by helical or double helical 
and advancement is synchronizing that we will be uh, seeing in the next class okay so main point this one only i have uh, forget uh, i did in uh, discuss what will happen any damage will happen to dog clutch only so what happens now no for when uh, dog clutch is going to get engaged okay so what will happen if any damage is going to happen it will be happening in the dog clutch only not to the gear because i am using this dog clutch to transmit the power to the main shaft this gears are always in engaged position so i am not shifting it so uh, teeth of the gear will not get uh, damaged whereas this dog clutch no i will be moving so chances for getting damaged for dog clutch will be more okay so it is easier to replace the dog clutch compared to the gear okay so this is a constant mesh gearbox synchromesh gearbox we will be seeing in the next class now we will be seeing the animation for constant mesh gearbox when you are understanding a uh, sliding mesh gearbox it will be very easy to understand constant mesh gearbox see same thing clutch shaft is there clutch gear lay shaft lay shaft gear main shaft gears see all the black gear are in mesh with blue one that is what constant mesh idle gear idle gear also will be in mesh we will not there is no need for you to move the gears see this one is dog clutch your uh, direct speed uh, is more okay that is maybe 4 or 5 and reverse one dog clutch even show the animation now right and this one is gears are in neutral position see all the dog clutch are in center power is not transmitted to the main shaft clutch shaft is rotating lay shaft is rotating since the dog clutch is not uh, moved what will happen it is not main shaft is rotating another important thing is the black color gears will be rotating that will be rotating freely on the main shaft but powers are not transmitted to the main shaft when the dog clutch is getting moved power will be transmitted see now he is moving that this dog clutch see this dog clutch is getting moved So now see the main shaft will be rotating. First gear will be obtained. Okay. And this one, second gear, left the first gear, right uh, second gear. And this one is a second sliding dog clutch, third gear, third direct. And this one is fourth. and this one is fifth so in this gearbox it will be used in buses i think five direct speed and one reverse okay and this one is reverse that's all okay we will be able to understand well when we are seeing this animation so we will be uh, seeing in next class okay morning and unmute the call morning and vishnu vijay kumar unmute the call see your responses are recorded okay who were attending the classes for this session i can say raghuman manigandan vijay Vij kumar when i am asking question you are not responding that also recorded so be active in the online class you should not simply connect and you should not leave okay okay next class i will be taking synchromance okay okay bye